Hello everyone, my name is Dutchie and welcome to RPG Labs. Hopefully you guys are all having a good day and uh, well today we'll be talking about my builds, specifically my weapons mainly. The stats that I'm basically having is a quality build which is strength and dexterity mostly with endurance and a bit of health. Now anyway, let's get on with the video. Alright, now the first thing we want to talk about is the weapons. The first weapon I'm going to talk about is the Bloodhound Fang. The Bloodhound Fang is extremely overpowered just because of one ability it has, which allows you to dodge backwards while attacking and then go back in and attack at the same time. Now, while you're doing this, in between those stages when you're attacking, you actually get invincibility frames when you dodge backwards and when you dodge back in. As you can see there, I actually just dodged his attack while performing my own. This is especially good against bosses who have that one big slam move that you can take advantage of. If you can time this perfectly right, you can do so much damage without the boss even being able to do anything back. Now there's a little tactic I like to use with this weapon, which is charge up an attack, but don't actually focus on hitting him with the first attack. Focus on hitting him with the second attack. So you charge up, miss, but then you dodge out of the way, they're coming towards you, and then you go straight into them and destroy them. Now, for you guys who are wondering where to get this sword, you go over to this location right here and fight the boss. Now, once you're fighting the boss, I recommend going straight for him as he spawns and not letting up on him. Because he is easily staggered, so that means you can kind of stun lock him. Another weapon I like to use is a curved sword. Now, any curved sword can really do, as long as it has a slot for an Ash of War. Because it's not the curved sword I'm really after, actually. It's actually the Ash of War that you can put on it. Now, you can also put this Ash of War on a couple other things, like a long sword, but that's really up to you, whatever you like. Now, this Ash of War is very strong, but it does take away a little bit of your health. I found it very early on in the game at this location right here. Now, don't be discouraged about the little bit of loss of health. You kind of got to think about your health as a little bit of a mana pool that you just got to make sure that you keep up. I like to keep mine above 70% at least at all times, but that's up to you. I would recommend never using this when you're low on health, obviously. But the damage output of this weapon is so crazy that it, it's just worth it. Now the great thing about this weapon as well is that it also builds bleed, which means that if that meter goes all the way to the top, you will take a lot of damage. Or, well, your enemy will take a lot of damage. Now this also pairs great with the Bloodhound Fang, just because the Bloodhound Fang also builds up bleed. So if you start off with this weapon and then turn to your Bloodhound Fang immediately, you can basically make them bleed in no time. Alright, now we come to the range. Now, I prefer to use this crossbow right here. This crossbow is very easy to get from the fog gate at the round table. Now, you just have to open it and there's a chest in there and it's right there. Now, I don't really use the crossbow too much as damage, more of a lure to get people to actually get out of their spots or let's say there's an enemy hiding in the roof and you want to quickly shoot them down because then only one of them will come down instead of the entire herd of monsters that are up there ready to kill you. But sometimes it is actually handy to use it if you want to stay away from a boss or an enemy and just quickly kill them with it. You might need a few bolts, but sometimes it's worth it. Alright, now we need to talk about the shield. Now, the Vagabond actually does start off with a pretty decent shield that has 100 physical damage. There are some better shields out there in the world, so just keep exploring and find better ones. Now, the main thing you actually need to do with the shield is find the Ash of War that is called No Skill. No Skill allows you to use your right hand weapon as the main Ash of War instead of you parrying with your shield or whatever else your shield has available. Now in this location right here, you have the War Master. The War Master sells you the No Skill. I already bought it, but it is right here if you want it. Now I will say, once I start getting more into PvP, I will probably switch back to parrying, because parrying is very overpowered in the original Souls games, so I'm wondering if it will be pretty strong in this one too. 
Now, whenever you're stuck in a boss, it's always a good idea to have a little bit of a summon with you. Now, summons make the fight a lot easier, just by distracting the boss a little bit. Now, summons usually can't win the fight for you, you still have to win the fight yourself. But they're great distraction. Like, if you look over here, I'm healing up, I'm about to hit him, bam, but he gets distracted by the jellyfish. Now, again, he does it straight over here, two hits, and then... He gets distracted by the jellyfish, allowing me to be scot-free. Now, if you want to get this jellyfish, it's actually really easy. You just go up to this lady right here. And the cool thing about this lady is, at one point she will actually join you at the round table. Now, while she's at the round table, talk to her and talk to the blacksmith. Now, once you've done that, she'll actually become available for you to upgrade your summons with. Upgrading your summons is extremely handy to make them more tankier, so they can take a few more hits before they go down from the bosses, making boss fights even easier. Now if you would move over to this location right here, there will be a giant who can sell you a talisman. Now before you actually get this talisman, you need to do a little quest where you actually befriend a guy who is half wolf. Now after you've done that, you talk to this guy right here and you buy this talisman right here. Now this talisman is actually pretty good for the build we're kind of going for because we're not really investing into mind or anything like that but we still kind of use a little bit of FP. Now as you can see I just used a bunch of skills here now I'm going to equip the talisman and I'm going to do the same skill again. Now you see I've lost a lot less FP than I did before. Now this can come in really critical when it comes to boss fights because that extra hit can really save your life. Now we come to one of my favorite items, the green turtle talisman. Now this item is located right here. And it's very crucial for a dexterity or even a heavy build. Because, well, you regain your stamina a lot faster than what you usually would. Meaning, there's less downtime for you and more time for you to swing your weapon or roll out of the way. Or even recovering your shield a lot faster. Alright, so there's two things about this area, by the way. One, you need a stone key to actually get into this. And two, there's an optional boss here. But you can actually just run past this boss if you feel like it. He's actually a really easy boss, so I do recommend killing him. But maybe grab this item first. Now, this doesn't look like much. But in the middle of a fight, having your stamina back just that split second faster is the difference between you winning the fight and you getting absolutely destroyed. Alright, now if you head over to this location right here, you'll actually be able to get the Bless Do Talisman. Um, there will be a chest, uh, open it and it will teleport you to a place with a golem. Fight the golem if you want, but there's just a chest to his right. Grab it and you got this Bless Do Talisman. Now the Bless Do Talisman is quite handy because what it does, it actually heals you slowly over time. Now, it doesn't actually heal you for that much, but what it does do is help you against poison. So poison areas, which there are quite a lot of them in this game, um, basically become a cakewalk now. Um, you don't have to keep popping antidotes and go to specific spots, you can sort of just run around. You'll still lose health over time, but you'll lose a lot less. Basically, it kind of counteracts it. Now I'll quickly show you the difference between how fast your health would go down normally and how fast your health would go down without it. Also, this talisman has saved my life at least once. Now this might just be because I really hate poison areas but I reckon this is a really good pick. Now you can swap this out for anything else whenever you're not in a poison area but I like just to keep this on because it's just handy to have. Alright so that's basically the gist of my build. Anyway I would love to hear what kind of builds you guys have at the moment. Let me know if you found anything that's even more OP, or even something that basically makes you invincible. That would be amazing. Alright, well, you guys have a good one, and, uh, bye!